Rozier, the Heisman Trophy winner from Nebraska, healthy again and very prominent in both running and receiving for the Bulls. The Birmingham Stallions, 7-2, best record in the USFL, featuring a crunching defense. Best in the league, two quarterback sacks and five interceptions last week, beating Tampa Bay. Birmingham's offense is balanced, featuring the running of Joe Cribbs, a ball control team looking for their third straight win. ABC Sports presents... The 10th week of the USFL. From the Gator Bowl, the Birmingham Stallions and the Jacksonville Bulls. We have our first brush with summer weather today in Jacksonville, Florida. The temperature 92 percent, humidity 52 percent. There is a little breeze to sort of keep you fresh, but it's going to be a hot afternoon in the Gator Bowl. Three points. This kick is low, sails downfield. Stallions running around, having trouble getting a hold of it. And uh, after the bobbling, Earl Gant finally controls it for the Stallions. And I guess the first question, is that an omen? because they were not able to handle that skidding kick. And sometimes players look for that. Omens, that is. It'll be Cliff Stout coming out at quarterback, 6'4", 215, played with the Steelers for seven years. Joe Cribbs, Leon Perry behind him. Joey Jones, Jim Smith, and Robin Earl. Earl being the tight end. Daryl Mason did not make the trip. Turner, Adelette, Battaglia, Sandin, and Phoenix had a tremendous game for Birmingham last week. The Stallions go to work from the 18. Give it a Cribs over the left side. Joe pops it out to close to a first down, maybe just short by a half a yard, as Curtis Anderson brought him down. It is Anderson, Nelson, and Keith Millard, the big people up front for the Jacksonville defenders. The linebackers are Tom Dinkle, Terry Beeson, Vaughn Johnson, and Joe Costello. Van Jakes, Joe Johnson, Chester G., and Donald Dykes in a revamped secondary, with Don Besselu having gone from Jacksonville to Memphis. Joel Coles is now in the backfield. Second down and one for Birmingham at the 27. Cribs for the first down, and that's just about all he got. As the stunt in the middle, they got to him, but the offensive surge of the line for the Stallions, I think, was enough. They play on real grass here at the Gator Bowl, and Lynn Swan, I think that's a very fortunate thing, because if they were on artificial surface down there today, it would really be hot. If this were any kind of artificial surface, Keith, the temperature could probably be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees hotter. Grass is not going to be a problem for the Birmingham Stallions, even though Legion Field is artificial turf, because they do practice every day on the grass field next to Legion Field. Cliff Stout back to throw. Gets some pressure, goes sideline to Jones, incomplete. Joey Jones trying to come back to the ball just beyond the marker, but Cliff Stout was feeling some heat. And uh, they feel here in Jacksonville that uh, Keith Millard is going to develop into one of the best pass rushers in the USFL. Well, if that's an indication of what he can do consistently in the ball game uh, and throughout the season, he definitely will become that, Keith. He put the pressure on, pushed out from the outside, and you see there he leaves the Bulls and sacks at seven. Second down and 10 now from near the 29 of Birmingham. Cribs trying to circle outside. Joe got some help on the corner over there and turns it upfield, and he got a good block from Jim Smith. Jim Smith was on the outside just holding his man up, wasn't trying to knock him down, giving Joe a screen so Joe could read. Now, well, let's take a look at number 93, Millard. Now, he's working against Turner. He just stands up and reads, and right there, Turner gets a piece of him to knock him down. There you see Jim Smith holding up the corner to the outside, allowing Joe Krebs the ability or the luxury of, of being able to read the block and choose his direction. It is third down and a short four now. And Birmingham at 38% on third down conversions this season. Stout. Not much of a play action fake, but lo and behold, he has a man wide open. It is Jim Brown, who is on the traveling roster this week. 6'4", 230, tight end out of southern Mississippi. He makes the catch and gets a first down. 
He made a very fine catch. Wally Dodge happy with the fact that he activated that young man since Daryl Mason was down. He comes in, makes a tough catch. Ball's in his hand. And it's a first down. Out coming on an option, pitches the ball out to Cribs. Joe Cribs turns the corner, gets another Birmingham first down, and they are grinding it out as they run something akin to a veer play to the right side. Chester G brought him down. You will hear again today the center, Mark Battaglia. Uh, there's a small, tiny little microphone in uh, Mark's helmet, and you'll hear him calling the blocking assignments for the offensive lineman while the quarterback calls the play. Cut. Three, four. Blue, 159, four. Blue, buddy. 159, four. Buddy, buddy Adelette. <laughs> and stop the throw on first down. Goes to the side. Good to Jones. Joey holds on. Solid hit by Van Jakes. But Joey's got it for another stallion first down. And Birmingham now is camped on the 27 of Jacksonville. And this is precisely what Lindy Infante feared most, ball control in a long drive. And this is typical. After running the ball so well, you run the play action. And the running game sets up everything for Birmingham. Joey Jones didn't do anything fancy here. Jakes is playing off of him. All he did was drive him a little bit deep, turn around, get timing on the pass for the completion. Blitz coming. Ball goes to Cribs, outruns the corner. And Joe's inside the 20. They'll put him at the 19, brought down by Donald Dykes. Well, they blitzed that time, and Birmingham caught him, and it hurt him because uh, Cribs circled outside. Well, it's a sweet play. You see Cribs, he's getting the ball. He get, gets great blocking up front from number 74, Pat Sandin. Just finds some room on the outside, and again, Jim Smith is blocking. Puts his shoulder, shoulder down and takes on people. Then and it's second game. down and one now. Birmingham is at the Jacksonville 18. Trip. First down inside the 15 at the 14. So that line surge of Birmingham has given him about three to four yards if he just stays inside the tackles with it. And Joe now with 43 yards on six carries. It's, a, it's such an aggressive line, Keith. Even when they're pass blocking, instead of just sitting back on their heels, giving ground to take on the rush, they will fire out in front of them, make contact with the defense, then set and pass blocking. And with much of their passing coming on play action passes, it allows them to do that time and time again. Jones and Smith are wide on first down. At the 14. <laughs> Out rolls, he's got double wide to that side, gets a pass away, and you'll get an interference call down around the two-yard line. It is first down and goal to go for the Birmingham Stallions. They have marched now from their own 18-yard line in the first possession of the ball game. Stout inside the big guy, Perry. Leon Perry, a 250-pounder, bangs his way for about three near the four. The crowd today expected to be around 50,000 or so. Hot day in Jacksonville, 92 degrees. Coles, who is fundamentally a blocking back, is in the lineup now. And they set Cribs out on a wing. Probably sets up a sweep right, and that's exactly what it does. But Cribs will not get around the corner this time. It's number 22. The left corner, Van Jakes, came up and played it very well and shoves him out of bounds short of the five-yard line. Well, Van Jakes is making his presence in this game felt very early. Coming up on key plays, making tackles, and unfortunately being called for a passing appearance here. The defensive line and linebackers do a great job here, Keith. They engage the offensive line, they plug up all the holes, and then they pursue laterally, forcing Joe Cribs to go wide to the outside with no ability to turn upfield and penetrate for positive yards. So it is third down and goal from the five for Birmingham. Nice. 
Stout will throw for it. Little short flip to Joe Cribbs, and they got Cribbs at the four. And the crowd loves it, and it's fourth down and goal. Perry Beeson and Vaughn Johnson, the inside linebackers, got him. This can be considered somewhat of a victory, Keith. Even though the Birmingham Sky started this drive on their own 18, and barring a breakdown of Danny Miller, they should come away with three points here. The defense held strong when it got tight in scoring territory, forcing an emotional victory in the drive. Miller's kick from 21 yards is good. So the Stallions do get some points out of that first procession of the ball game at seven minutes and 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. Birmingham three and Jacksonville will have the ball said to be around 50,000. That is in contrast to a little over 7,000 in Los Angeles, a little over 8,000 in Denver and over 12,000 in Oakland. So they're drawing very well again this year in Jacksonville. Aubrey Matthews and Reggie Butts saw the beat people for the Bulls getting the ball for the first time after Birmingham chewed up half of the first quarter clock. And it goes down to Aubrey Matthews. Fumbles Fumble. the football and a dive at it. Big but I think Jacksonville kept it. Yep. One man back there and three white shirts and the one man. Second down and seven. <laughs> Luther swings it out to Mason. Mason out here one-on-one. -on -one. Good juke. Good move on number 22, Dumars, and gets him upfield for a first down. Dumars did a very good job, Keith, that time of just wading through the crowd. The ball is down near the 36 of Birmingham where it's first down Jacksonville and Jacksonville trying to answer the Stallions opening drive for a three-pointer from the 31 yard line <laughs> Rozier looking inside for a little bit and you heard a lot of grunting and groaning uh, down inside the trenches that's what it sounds like when you're amongst them uh, as Jackie Klein is wearing a helmet microphone today to give you those sounds. Jackie and his wife, Vicki, proud parents of a brand new baby daughter, Jennifer Wynn, born Thursday. Overstack? Actually born Friday. I talked to him. We had some Friday? confusion. Yeah. Hal Hayes is our public relations director. He wasn't quite sure, so I talked to him on the field. He said, if you can, just tell everybody I'm happy she's in my life now. Back goes Luther on second down and seven. Little short swing is away to Rozier, a Mason rather. Mason catching the ball. And Rozier out there trying to put a lick on somebody to give Larry some running room. And they don't get a whole lot out of that one. The ball will go to about the 28-yard line. Keith, one of the great things about having a team that is built up or shored up, shored up by a great defensive unit as Birmingham is, when your opponent has to go the length of the field, it gives that defense more opportunities to stop you, to turn things around, to make a great play. That time they came up with a great second down play. Now it's third and long. This might be a crucial play for the defense to stop this Jacksonville drive. Third and about seven. He comes to this side, passes complete to Gary Clark. Clark is going to be short of the first down. Number 52, Bill Rowe, the middle linebacker, reading the play. He'll run for it with Rozier. And he got it. And Mason is out there. Aubrey Matthews joins Alexis and Clark as wide receivers. Black 50! Black 50! Hot! Hot! Penalty flag. You either had movement on one side or the other. Number 60, Keith, Gary Anderson, the offensive left guard. There was movement on the defensive line that he raised up. Ball start. Number 60 on the offense. Still third down. So they called it on him for the movement, the false start. That's a tough five-yard penalty. You're looking at third down and about 10 from the... Birmingham 20, and now you're looking at third down and 14, roughly, from the 25. And if they don't get a sizable amount of yards in this play, it's going to make it a pretty long field goal attempt. 42 yards if they don't pick up any key. 50! Pass 
Davis is good. Fumbled out of bounds. They're going to rule a catch at the 14. That will be short of the first down by three yards. Alexis had it, lost it when he tried to turn back upfield and pick up the first down. So now Brian Franco will have a more reasonable distance to kick the ball. Keith will take a look at something. You see Alton is wearing some padding on his elbow. I've often found in the hot days, you sweat, the ball gets a little slippery, your arms are slippery. When you try and tuck it into your elbow where it's supposed to be secure, you've got a pad there, Keith, and it just slips right out. And I think that's what's happening to Alton. Franco will hit it from 31 yards. He is a co-holder of the league record of five field codes in a game. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is drilled. And good. At 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Birmingham takes the opening kickoff. They go down and get three. Jacksonville comes right back and they get three. This play should end the quarter. Comes down to Paul Octoroos as Birmingham gets the football for the first down snap at their own 25-yard line. 10 seconds remaining in the first period of play. Another Jacksonville player is shaken up, getting up now very slowly. You'll see fatigue become a definite factor in this ball game as we get down into the third and fourth quarter because it, as Tim Brandt told you at the beginning, over 100 degrees on the playing surface, and that's good old Mother Earth and grass. Oh, but I think in Birmingham, the weather this time of year is very comparable to high humidity. You see one of the ways of cooling off on the sideline as the quarter comes to an end. So I think the heat will affect both teams equally, Keith. The home team is not going to have an advantage. So after 15 minutes of our ball game today, it's Birmingham 3 and Jack. Came to the New Jersey Generals and now down to Jacksonville when Flutie was signed by New Jersey. And then lo and behold, first game, Brian gets a shoulder injury, but he's throwing again and could play next week in the ball game against New Jersey. Right now, Birmingham has the football. First down at their own 25. And it's Cripps. And good defensive flow this time. Pursuit from the backside by Jacksonville. Gets a couple of yards for Cribs. Curtis Anderson ran him down. Curtis played at Oklahoma with the Outlaws a year ago. Uh, the new surgery on uh, Brian Sipe, which has brought about this remarkable recovery. He had surgery March 26. Uh, separation of the shoulder. It was repaired by uh, Dacron Bellus prosthetic ligament resection of the distal clavicle. In other words, a Dacron shoelace to tie it all together. That's right. <laughs> Second down and eight. Cliff stop. Gets it away down the middle, and it is intercepted on the ricochet by Chester G. And the Bulls have the ball at the Birmingham 44. The Birmingham man got his hands on it, but the ball was a bit high. He couldn't pull it down, Jim Smith, and it fell into the arms of Chester G playing center field. We'll see here, Coach Scott will feel the pressure. Uh, Smith will open up in the pocket. And he'll try and lob it in and give him a chance to jump for it. For number 26, Chester G comes up. Smitty lets that one bounce off his fingertips. A tough one to hang on to. And Gee played hot potato with it for a while. Finally got a good grip on it. Turned it upfield. Now Chester Gee is playing free safety. Until last week, he was a strong safety. He's going to have a tough ball game this afternoon. Right now. The defense has given the <coughs> Jacksonville Bulls offense now an opportunity. The ball is just short of the Birmingham 44 after G's interception. Luther's 5 out of 6 for 30 yards. And should be 6 out of 6, actually. Going on first down. Pressure got him. Down he goes. Number 97, Big Doug Smith out of Auburn. A rookie. 6'5", 300, and he got after him. Well, the defense is going to have to make the great plays to nullify that turnover, force them out of the field goal range, or possibly create a turnover for themselves because up until that point, it's been a pretty even ball game, Keith. Loss is all the way back to the 48-yard line. Big Doug from Bayboro, North Carolina, owns a piece of a fishing boat up there. His family has been in the fishing business. He Whoa. hankers someday to go back as soon as he gets that? enough coin to buy his own boat. Well, sell him one of yours. <laughs> Don't have a one now. Thank you. Second down. Long. Down the middle. Pass is caught. Terry Kemp. 
And Perry Kemp blazes his way to the 20. Kemp hurt a little while ago, comes back into the ball game, shaking off the bruise, and comes up with a big play. Very big play. We have to keep in mind that the offensive team of the Jacksonville Bulls likes to control the football through the air. They haven't done it as much in this ball game yet, but here's one example of what they can do once their game plan is working to perfection. They get you looking for the short pass, and they hit one short down in the seam. The receiver makes a catch early, then has a little running room. First down, Bulls on the Stallions, 20. 3-3 three, three ball game, second quarter of play. Little draw play, Rozier picking his way down to the 16. Brought down by Bill Rowe. And last week we saw a football game, Keith, where one of Birmingham's great advantages was that they played the football game on half a field. Their average starting position for offense was about the 46 or 43 yard line where Tampa's was on the 18. Now here with a turnover, the offense has given Jacksonville the field position and possibly a chance to go in for seven points. <laughs> Rozier on second and six. Puts his head down, but number 25, Mickey Sutton out of Montana, Rozier. wasn't about to get into a collision match with Mike Rozier. He went underneath and took his feet from under him. Sutton did a great job, but here's someone else, Bill Roll, the inside back of 52, who helps make the play. Now he's chasing Rozier. Rozier knows he can't cut back. He has to keep going to the outside. Then he runs right into the help, Mickey Sutton. Third down and still about six as Tampa Bay and Baltimore are scoreless in the second quarter. Rozier's out for a breath of wind now, and Mason is in. Black 50! Black 50! Figures pass here. Brilliant <laughs> touchdown! Harry Kemp. Luther threw a bullet. And you can see Raleigh obviously displeased. The offense of Jacksonville marching down the field after the turnover. Coming away with the touchdown. Luther rifling a pass into Kemp. Kemp, for a moment we thought, wouldn't be back in the ball game. Coming back in to make a couple of critical catches. And the touchdown. Franco hits the extra point. He's now 43 in a row in USFL extra points. With 10.48 to play in the first half, Jacksonville goes out to a 10-3 lead over Birmingham as Luther connects with Kemp. McFadden and Sutton deep for Birmingham. Kick is way back into the end zone. There will be no return. So, with 10.43 to go in the first half, the home folks are happy with the Bulls leading 10-3. Jacksonville rolling up the yards now through the air. That was the expected Luther. Seven out of eight in his passing. Right now, Cliff Stout brings Birmingham up. First down. And ten for the Stallions from their own 20. And on first down, Stout swings it out. Sets a screen for Cribs. Joe gets some help on the corner and should have a first down. He was diving for the marker at the 30. And they're going to mark him just short of it. Mike Rozier out a moment ago appeared to have an injury. Tim Brent. Keith, earlier in the year, Mike Rozier sat out two games because of an injured hand. That problem is hampering his uh, activities here again this afternoon. On that last run he had in that offensive series for Jacksonville, he was stepped on. It is the finger, the same hand. He's in a great deal of pain. Just talked to Mike, though. He said he will be back in the ball game. Jacksonville has it rolling, and he's not going to sit out now. I understand. Second down and one. Cribs for the first down. And he's got it. He was trying to slash in between Millard and Nelson, and he got just enough. Millard will be working against number 64, Turner, Mike Turner, and that's going to be a real tough assignment for him all afternoon. Keith, he had his hand stepped on earlier in the season, and as a result, he had two fingers that were dislocated. The hands were badly bruised, and even coming in today's game, they were taped very heavily. Kind of unusual to have that much trouble with your hands, though. It's Blue, 
Of course, a running back, every part of his body, I guess, is going to get down sooner or later. On first down, they go to the big man, Leon Perry. Fumbles the football as he goes down. The official on this near sideline is calling him calling dead. Calling him down, yeah. The ball was dead. He was down. No fumble. And the fans let the officials know that they are not happy with that well, call. Well, what about uh, Infante? Is he going to challenge? Well, I'm looking for him on the sideline. He's calling for an yep. official, and he's talking to the official. Let's just find out. If he's right, he gets the ball. If he's wrong, he loses a timeout. And I think he will call for the challenge. Well, Cal Lepore is the review official. At least I saw him here earlier before the game, so we'll take another look. The red flag is being thrown as we take another look. If his knee touches the ground, right, right now he's down. Now let's see if he's touched. The ball pops loose. Nobody hits him, Keith. That is clearly a fumble. He was not touched. When his knee hit the ground, he can get back up and run. I think Lindy Infante is going to get a positive call on his challenge. He's looking at his television <laughs> set. Give Lindy another look here so he have a chance to... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, it. Lindy. Courtesy of ABC. Might help Cal, too, to make the decision here. Now, he has... What caused him to go down? Was he not hit by a defensive player? He was tripped up coming through the line. And that will be, I guess, the judgment part of the call. The ground cannot cause a fumble, though. No. Keith, just talking to Lindy, he says the reason they're challenging is because they don't feel anybody touched him. And if no one touches him, then the ground can't cause a fumble. And that's why Lindy is challenging the call. Well, we'll look again. Right here he goes through. Number 99, I think that's uh, Keith Millard. Joe Castell. It is ruled a fumble. So Infante challenges and gets the call. And don't you believe that Riley Dots is having a few words to himself about that instant, about that replay rule and the challenge rule. This one's working against him. He apparently was not touched by a defensive player, tripped over his own people, and in light of the rules, would have been able to get up and continue. And so was the trying ball had to come free, and Joe Johnson recovered it for Jacksonville. And he was trying to get back up again. Looked like it. And that may be the reason why he fumbled the football. So Birmingham's turned it over now, successively, and Jacksonville at the Stallion 38. Rozier is back in the lineup. And Luther will throw on first down. Out it goes to Mason. One-on-one, -on -one, Mason. Gets a pretty good chunk of yardage, about seven as he gets down to the 31. David Evans brought him down. Here's another look. Ball going to Perry. You see here. He's got it pretty loose, though, as he he's runs got into it that loose. line. He comes down. He's holding it right in the middle. Right there, he bounces. The ball just comes right away from his hand and his body. I think he just lost it, Keith, as he made contact with the ground. And Jacksonville recovered in their second down and three at the Birmingham 31 with 8.25 to go in the second quarter. Just not sound. Rozier no nailed behind the line of scrimmage, and it was Mike Sameta, 285-pound tackle out of Kansas State, firing in to bring him down. He'll go off the field, lost a shoe on that play. You got 285 pounds going that fast. Something's got to give. <laughs> Boy, he really came blowing in there. You think uh, Lindy Infante will let us mic one of his players now that we showed them the replays? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Third and still a long three. Three flat, 60. Cut, cut. <laughs> 30 second clock, I think, ran out on him, Keith. Well, there's a zero showing over that tunnel. The Delay clocks the are located over Number the tunnel. Number 11 on the offense, still third down. Quarterback always gets that call. Jacksonville's been flagged three times for 17 yards of the game so far. That is not the place, nor the time, to be making that kind of mistake, though. Instead of third and about three and a half, you're now looking at uh, third and s close to eight. Left, left. See if the Birmingham defense can take advantage of their miscue. Left, left. Oh, oh, side. Left, 
Thrown outside, set up a tight end screen for Mark Peel, number 82, and uh, he's out of bounds well short of the first down. Knocked out around the 32. They had good pressure from the Birmingham defense on that Luther. Screen play is a good call, Keith, in that situation for number 25, Mickey Sutton, came up, who was very deep in the coverage for the Birmingham Stands to make a great play. He weaved through all the blocking downfield to stop him well short of a first down. Franco going for a big one, 49 yards. If he misses, Birmingham will have pretty good field position on the 32, his longest 51. He hits it. Plenty of legs and good. Seven twenty-five to go in the first half. Franco has just hit a 49-yard field goal. He's 15 out of 18 on the season. Clarence Verdan has just run 102 yards with a kickoff return, which breaks his own record in the USFL for touchdown returns off the kickoff. And Baltimore Tampa Bay still scoreless in the second quarter. Franco ahead to kickoff now for Jacksonville, taking it to Birmingham. Sutton at the five. The 23. Tony Hayes coming down for you, the hot man on the kickoff coverage, and he gets Sutton. They're going to give his progress almost to the 24. So Keith. now Birmingham has turned it over successively, and Jacksonville has cashed it in each time. Earlier in this season, they were having a problem, Keith, with turnovers, not maintaining possession of the football. They corrected that problem, so in coming into to today's ball game, they led in the takeaway giveaway column with a plus takeaway of 15 compared to Jacksonville with a minus five. This is Joe Cripp. Well, this Jacksonville defensive crowd now are pretty well jacked up, aren't they? They, they hold are. Cribs to about two yards, Nelson and Millard. Nelson played at Miami, and Bob was over with the Oklahoma Outlaws last year. It is now third down and 11. Take Reggie. 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 the shotgun stout looks right goes to cribs again and there are three jacksonville bulls over there you know one of them is going to get him the first one missed him but the second one didn't the overall defensive scheme pays off keith they take away the deep route so it will be good enough for the first down Force Cliff Stout to throw the ball, to dump it off to Cribs, and everybody came up. The crowd is getting into the ball game now, full force. This, of course, is the setting for the Georgia. It's gone! Florida series. It's been one of the great collegiate series in history. This is McFadden. No, it is Clark. Gary Clark back there. And Clark brings it, uh, almost popped that thing out of there. If Gary Clark had had one half step or just a half a block, he might still be running after a 30 But it was our information, Tim Brandt, that he might have broken a finger. There is no question about it. They are going to x-ray it at halftime just to be sure, but when he came out after that last series, the trainers and the doctors will work at it, and they told me emphatically that it is broken. It is the pinky finger. It was bent out sideways, and it was actually bleeding. The skin is broken. They taped it up. They are ready to go. He says it's his job to play. He's going back out to play, but right now, he's performing with a broken finger. And Jacksonville will start at their own 44, leading 13-3 to with four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Mason hit behind the line of scrimmage by a blitzing Mickey Sutton coming out of the cornerback position. Mickey Sutton making some big plays and big tackles against the Birmingham, against the Jacksonville Bulls. Stopping that play, he was the only man that seemed Keith to be coming in aggressively to make that stop. He lost a yard on the play. And so it is second down. 
Oh, he lost more than a yard. What am I saying? He lost <laughs> all the way back to the 38. It's so like he six lost yards. six yards on the play. Luther with good protection gets it off. It is caught by number 80, Gary Clark. But Clark isn't going to come up with anything on the play. In fact, may have lost the yard. Gary Clark was a leading receiver on the ball club a year ago. Got hurt early in the going this year and has had trouble getting back to his full stride. Alton Alexis came in. It's his second year. But right now we'll take a look at Clark. He didn't like the way that number 26, David Evans, rolled him out of bounds and then gave him that little extra push there. So he tosses the ball back. <laughs> I did that once, Keith, against a linebacker in uh, the New England Patriots. Threw the football back at him. Took me a week to get my get his footprints out of my chest after he jumped on me. <laughs> didn't do it again either. No, I didn't. I chose my opponents carefully. <laughs> Third and 16. Luther's pass is drilled incomplete at midfield. That would have been short of the first down anyway. And it was intended for Mark Keel, number 82. Luther now 10 out of 12 for 85 yards in the ball game and a touchdown. And now Larry Swider will come in to punt for Jacksonville. Well, the defense executed well that time. Keith played much more aggressively and made the big plays in stopping the Jacksonville Bulls. Now let's see what kind of punt and what kind of field position they end up with this time around. Swider averaging close to 43 per kick, number three in the USFL punting. It's Low good, kick. Good. Depends on the bounce. It bounces away from Thad McFadden and will kick dead on the grass inside the 25. They'll mark it down at the 23. So with the roll, it turns out to be a 39-yard punt. Keith, that, that's <laughs> very interesting to note. I've always been taught that as a punt returner, you always line up 40 yards from where the ball or the line of scrimmage is. At 40 yards, you've got enough time to back up if it's a 45 or 50-yard punt. If it's a short punt of 35 or 30 yards, you, once you judge the ball off the foot, you come up and you make the catch. Now that time, I think McFadden should have been up closer. Then he could have charged up to the ball, made a fair catch, and gained about 15 yards on this punt. If you let a ball punt hit the ground, chances are 99% of the time it's going to cost you a yard. Birmingham goes to work for the 23, trailing by 10 points, stout play action, back to throw. Out here to Cribs. Cribs has got some help. Two people in front of him. And Joe's up to the 35. That'll be a first down where Joe Johnson brings him down. Joe, a rookie out of Notre Dame and a hard hitter at 195 pounds. And Joe Cribs getting up very gingerly. We're now at the two-minute mark to go in the first half of play. And so far, it has been Jacksonville controlling the ball game because of Birmingham turnovers. And they lead 13 two minutes. Dumps the ball off to Joel Coles, and Coles is run down and knocked down at about the 38-yard line. If Keith Millard doesn't fall down that time, he we probably would have had a chance to knock that ball away in the backfield of Birmingham or else sack Stout, but he fell down. Two minute offense for Birmingham. On second down and seven. Stout goes go, big with it. Go. Pass is caught. Drilled it. Smith came down with it. And Smith, just about the time the ball was there, had Derek Batiste take his feet from under him. I'm telling you, the Birmingham Stallions aren't getting a lot of time to throw the football. Keith Millard came in really hard here from the outside. Again, working against Mike Turner. He gets outside position and makes contact with Cliff. They've got a first down at their 48-yard line. The pass is off the hands of Joe Cribbs, incomplete. Thrown very hard, and Joe was twisting as he tried to make the catch. Now, Derek Batiste is the man who was covering. Joe was drifting to the outside, and the ball thrown just a bit behind him. Instead of planning and trying to make a little comeback move to the ball, he just spun on it. The ball went through his hands. He must have been a teammate of Buford Jordan at, Man at McNeese State. Yep. Buford with the Portland Breakers. Right, right. Prior oh, to that miss, Bay. Stout had hit six in a row. is loose oh Pat Sandin had it for a minute and then he's kind of rolled over the ball and a Jacksonville man dove after it I think he still got it Keith 
Finky had it. Just pulled it right back in. That ball didn't bounce that far away from him. Yeah, Big Patrick comes up with it. 275 pounder. It was Terry Beeson who formerly played with the Seattle Seahawks who was in there trying to steal it. Taking another look at it. They're playing a shotgun. He just... Ball never got back to him. Never came. <laughs> I wonder if he thought Cliff was standing there. Good beat. <laughs> Talk to Battaglia about that one. It's third down and about 16 now. That's encroachment on Jacksonville. It's a free play. Ah. Pass is thrown out of bounds incomplete. You get a situation like that, Keith, and it's very difficult for a quarterback to always be aware of it and to play it accordingly, but when the defense jumps off sides, it's a free play for the yep. offense. Right. You might as well go downfield and try and get the big play. Wait a Mike little bit Griffin, longer. Um, at Griffin had come in. Offside, number 92 on the defense, still third down. And Ike was trying to anticipate the snap, and that's kind of hard to do when you're cold coming off the bench. That is true, but when you're going to rush the passer, you know it's a passing situation. You can't just always wait for the snap of the ball. You have to roll into it. So that gets them back to a third and ten, approximately. Give it to Paul Otkaruth. And the rookie out of Alabama runs into Keith Millard and goes down at about the Jacksonville 48, well short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down and Jacksonville Defensive people playing very well. Birmingham has spent a time out now to talk about things with only 46 seconds to play in the first half. It's conceivable they could decide to go for it on fourth and a long six. But there is no deep man for Jacksonville. Jacksonville kind of smells something here that Birmingham might not go for the punt. It's fourth down and a short seven or a long six. And kick Parsons gone, does kick it. Gone. Very high hanging kick. Good kick by Parsons. Takes a good bounce for Birmingham, and they put it down at about the two-yard line of Jacksonville. Ken Toler downing the ball. Second quarter, it's now 7-7 Baltimore, Tampa Bay, and 17-12 Houston leading San Antonio in the second quarter. And here, it is Jacksonville 13 and Birmingham 3. Wally Dodge told me before the game, Keith, that uh, yes, it's true. Bob Parsons doesn't really kick the long punt. Last week, he only had to punt one time, and he did it for 48 yards. But all of last year, he punted the football, Keith, inside the 20 about 60% oh, of the time. Ball is at the two-yard line now, and I would think Jacksonville will just grind it out a couple of snaps here and go to the clubhouse leading by 10. Rozier's in there, along with Mason. And Luther takes the snap and just falls down. So that'll get the clock running. And immediately, I think Birmingham will spend another time out. You heard the whistle stopping it. Birmingham has, I think, one timeout left. The scoreboard is showing two. And yeah, it should be one. They just changed it. They have one timeout left so that the Jacksonville Bulls can effectively do the same kind of play to prevent the chance of a safety. Well, this is far and away the best outing for Ed Luther since he came over to this ball club. But, you know, it, w it would be understandable, Keith, in as much as he was never expected to be the starter early on in the season. Brian Seip gets injured, and he's called up, and this is, you know, he has to play. Mafu's had to play a game also. They've had a number of quarterbacks who have taken turns starting for this ball club. Now, Lin Lindy said that Ed Luther right now is where he should have been or where he would like for him to have been at the start of the season. Of course, he wasn't here. He was purchased uh, That's right. in the second week. So it took him time to learn the system. So this is not the same quarterback who threw five interceptions against the Birmingham Stallions the first time they played. He knows the system now. He's much more relaxed behind the center, and he's reading the defenses very well. Does he enough the old town? This should be the last snap of the half. Man is down, a man is down. Luther this time takes no chance in handing the ball off, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So a bit of a surprise at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville.
the Birmingham Stallions with the best record in the NF in the USFL with <laughs> seven and two mark. They trail by ten. The Bulls four and five coming in, looking for their third straight. They lead 13-3. Back after a mess. Jacksonville has the ball uh, to start the second half as Aubrey Matthews comes from the two back to about the 15. They'll give his progress to the 16. Halftime stats now. Well, when you look at the halftime stats, the most important thing that you'll see are the turnovers. Two for the Birmingham Stallions, and that translated into 10 points for the Jacksonville Bulls. Everything else is fairly even. Unfortunately, Birmingham moves the ball in their own territory, not in scoring territory, so they don't even have the opportunity to have Danny Miller come out and try for a field goal. <laughs> And that is a bull. <laughs> All right, Gained now 300 let's, pounds last week, Keith. Let's see what. <laughs> let's see what happens. Is Rozier's out there, broken hand, or broken finger, and he'll test it right here, and picks up four yards, close to five, as he gets out around the 21. Keith, very often when you have an injury like that, it causes you to concentrate more on making sure that it does not become a factor. So he knows his little fingers hurt. He's got to play with the pain. It's taped up so it's immobilized to a certain degree. Now he just concentrates on hanging on to that football, tucking it away, and hopefully for him, it won't be a factor. They've given him five out to the 21. Oh, it's second down. Run a draw with Rozier. And he's just short of the first down, trying to spin off the stack. Led by Dennis Woodbury, the left cornerback for the Stallion. He's pulled down just short of his first down. Here's Tim. Keith would look to be a sure broken finger on Mike Rozier, and it was reported as such. Now the x-rays are back, and it's not broken. How, how could that be done? Well, we looked at his finger, and, you know, we've had a lot of problems with Mike's hands this year. He had a dislocated finger in one hand and torn ligaments in the other earlier in the season. This finger looked a little crooked with some blood around his nail. It was very tender. Uh, we taped it up and sent him back in for a few plays in halftime. We got x-rays, and it looks real good. Okay, Dr. Stephen Lucy. <laughs> and Rozier pounding away here, trying for the first down, and I don't know about this one. It's still going to be very, very close. They Keith, will measure. I was going to say about Rozier, the way he ran the play before that, normally he would put his hands out and straight on that person right in front of him. That time trying to protect his hand, I think he spun on him, and he lost a few yards on that play. I think he's going to be short of his first down. So it'll be fourth down probably at about a half a yard. Looks to me like the spot had to be closer to the 26 than it is. Yep. About a half a yard. That's about six inches. And I'm sure the temptation here is, well, let's try for it. But uh, Lindy and Fonty has been to the well too many times and seen those kind of things blow up in your face this early in the game, so he'll have no part of it. He sends Swider in the punt. And we also, you know, we keep talking about field position. It would be a terrible mistake, uh, paramount to a turnover, if they were not to get off a good punt and are in fourth down, not make it, handing the ball up to Birmingham inside the 30-yard line. McFadden settles under it at the 39. And comes back to about the 43, close to the 44. So it'll be good field position for the first possession of the second half for the Birmingham Stallions after that 36-yard punt. The one time he tried to go down the middle with some depth on it, went off the hands of Jim Smith for a re reflected interception. From the 44, Joel Coles is in there with Joe Cribbs. <laughs> And Coles has the ball and is stripped up right at the line of scrimmage as Tom Dinkle, an outside linebacker, had penetrated. Tom out of uh, Kansas, a Jayhawk, played six years with the Cincinnati Bengals, and of course that's where Lindy Infante came from, serving there as the offensive coordinator for Cincinnati, and he remembered Tom, and Tom was available, so he went out and found him. Got him, brought him back, put a helmet on him. One thing about coaches who aspire to be head coaches, Keith, whether they come from colleges or the professional ranks, they always seem to have a personal notebook on talent they think is good that's not being used that they can get their hands on. That's right. 
They lost a half a yard on Cole's carry, and Cliff Stout back throws to Joe Cribb, sets up a screen. Joe with two men in front of him. He'll be short of his first down, but gets a pretty fair gain out of that as he crosses midfield and goes close to the 48. Donald Dykes from southeast Louisiana in three years with the New York Jets jumped into the melee and finally knocked him out of bounds. Buddy Adelette uh, out of the University of Alabama ended up blocking two people, Keith, on that screenplay for Joe Cribbs. He's number 78. You'll see him right there. He gets one block here and then leg whips another guy. Puts him right down. It's third down three, and four, two. Three, four. No. Don't reduce. Stop throwing for it. Has a man wide open. Jim Smith, and I don't know if he caught it. The ball came loose, but they're going to rule it a catch. It looked to me like uh, Jimmy was hot fingering that thing the whole time. Well, Jimmy got some single coverage man to man. Drove his guy out off of him. Turned back inside, and he was falling down to catch that pass, which was rather low. And just looked like he just stumbled back a little bit. Realized he hadn't been touched, and the defender was quite a ways off. Turned around and tried to get himself back up in time. But the defensive corner Three, came back over to touch him down. Over. 16. Over. So it's a first down at the 37 of Jacksonville. Stout in trouble. Gets away from Millard. He had him and he got away. And Millard is storming there. Because he had him dead cold. And Stout, who is not a gimme now, Cliff is 6'4", 215. And he's not going to go down without making a contest out of it. No, he's not. Matter of fact, last night, I was out running with uh, our producer, Kenny Wolf. We came back to the hotel. And he took a look at Cliff Stout, who was coming into the hotel, and said, hey, this is a big guy. I said, you're right. When Clifford decides to run, he'll tuck the ball away. It won't be brought down easily. Right there, he straight arms Millard. Now watch him tuck it away. He says, I'm not throwing this one. Heads right to the sideline, gets as much as he can. Well, he got about eight yards, and here's Cribbs trying to get the first down. Yeah, the big guy got ahead of steam. Donald Dykes and Joe Johnson with the men on the coverage making the stop. Once he caught the ball on the scene, it was this momentum that just carried him in. He didn't have to see the end zone. Backed into it. Former fullback for Don James at the University of Washington. Played for the Chicago Bears for a couple of years. You see right here, a quick slant. He catches it, protects the football. He knows he's in traffic. Right there, backs into the end zone. Brings him back with the extra point. He'll be down by only three. Third catch for Arrow. Results in a touchdown. The kick is good by Miller. And at 10.02 to go in the third quarter, it is now a three-point ball game. 13-3 as the Stallions and White kick off now. Baltimore, Tampa Bay, 7-7, third quarter. High hanging kickoff by Miller. It is Aubrey Matthews. And he comes back to the 20. They haven't really been able to pop anybody out of the stack against Birmingham and effect a big kickoff return. 9.52 to go now as uh, the Stallions went the 56 yards rather quickly. Well, I think it was more important for them to just get on the scoreboard, to regain some of their confidence, and to start executing, Keith, the way that they're capable of. And the mistakes have hurt them, but they may have been, just been a little bit flat coming into this ball game. Jacksonville now, got to be careful not let old Mo put on a white shirt here. <laughs> they go from their 20. This is their second defensive possession of the half. And Luther throwing on first down. Throws it in the crowd, trying to get it to Mike Rozier, and there were three white shirts over there. Number 25, Mickey Sutton came flying across. Mike Perko, the defensive end, had drifted out on the play. And it could be that Ed's lucky to get that one back. Uh, it's a good thing he got out of the way with the pressure. He could have easily been sacked had he held on to that ball for an extra second or two. Got a little fake to Rozier. Rozier is a safety valve. He's got him crossing close right there. Mike Perko looked almost like he tipped that ball when he stuck his arm in there, Keith. Second down, 10. Pass is caught by number 85, Perry Kemp, 
Kip had the ball at the 30 and trying to uh, get loose and get more was thrown back. But they will give his progress the 30 and that will be a first down. The crowd is 41,298. That's the second largest of the season in Tampa Bay now has gone ahead of Baltimore 14 to 7. crowd makes a big difference Keith I played in ball games at the Pro Bowl where not that many fans showed up prior to moving to Hawaii but a lot of big crowd there was really no enthusiasm among the players the action Luther down the middle caught by Mark Keel Keel's loose and the tight end from Arizona goes for the big play down to the Birmingham 30 before Chuck Clanton and Herb Spencer finally pull him down. And that was a heck of a catch. That was a great catch. They were catching him in the zone. And Lindy told me that if, he, if they saw a lot of coverage where they had five people in the short zone, two people back deep, they were going to try and go down the middle. And that was the only time they'd go down the middle. And that's exactly what happened. Chuck Clanton was back deep. And look at Alton Alexis. He's downfield blocking on number 26, David Evans. Pushing him downfield, allowing the big tight end to pick up more yards. 50. Coming wide, Dave! 50. <laughs> Luther still got it. They're going to call unnecessary roughness on the defense. Mickey Sutton. I guess he was down when uh, he, the contact was made by Sutton. He was down. And the following player, I guess, felt he didn't know that there was... Personal foul. Contact. So we Spearing, went after it. Number 97 on the defense. Oh, nine, 97. Doug Smith. Down. Well, I guess if he'd have kept his helmet up, he'd have probably been all right. You put that head down and stick that helmet into somebody, and, and we'll take a look. You for that. He jumps over. I guess it would have called that down. But right here, you see him just diving in there. He actually misses him with the helmet, yeah, catches he him more with the shoulder pad, but I think the official was calling more the intent of what young Doug Smith had in mind. And the penalty moves the football to the 11 of Birmingham, where it is first down for Jacksonville. 640 to go third quarter. Rozier. Touchdown! A tough run by Mike Rozier for 11 yards, and the crowd whoops it up. So Jacksonville answers with a determined 80-yard march, a tough 11-yard run by Rozier. They've got enough people here to make it look good. That's number 24, Chuck Clatton out of Auburn, coming up to try and stop Rozier. But the former Nebraska All-American Heisman Trophy winner just had too much strength. Carried Chuck for a low ride into the end zone. Thad McFadden and Mickey Sutton are the beat people. No, it's uh, Paul Ocaroof. And it's Paul to the ball. And he brings it across the 20, back out to about the 23-yard line. So out comes the Birmingham offense again to see if they. The Jacksonville's got three games at home in a row. New Jersey next week and Tampa Bay the following week. It's first down Birmingham, their own 23, stopped going on first down, whips one incomplete. The pass was intended for Robin Earl, the tight end. Phil Stout got a lot of arm and body into that pass. He got up in the air on him. Robin Earl couldn't get up in the air and haul it in, hang on to it. It was going by him too quickly. There is, however, a constant pressure from the Jacksonville rush. They haven't been able to get to Stout a whole lot, but they have been on the verge. Well, very Three, often that's all you need. That can create the big plays, forcing him to throw too soon. <coughs> Throwing again on second and ten. Goes underneath to Ken Toller. And Toller running hard is down around the 32. Ken Toller out of Mississippi. Had two years with the Patriots. That was a pretty good effort by Toller. He didn't really lose much ground running laterally trying to get to the outside to turn up field. There's no one from the hash marks on just about had he been able to get there. But I don't think he quite has a 4-4 four, four 
four three speed to do that, Chief. Fourth, third and a short two. Looked like Terry Beeson, inside backer, stepped in and filled and helped out Bob Nelson on the play. And they stopped trip. Uh, don't know if that's one of the better business deals George has ever made. <laughs> it's amazing what we do sometimes to be a part of something big. He owns 37% of the horse now. On first down, Ed Luther back for Jacksonville. Drops it off short to Rozier. And Mike's up to the 42. That's a seven-yard pickup. Luther went back, wound up like he was going big with it, deep, but instead dumped it to Rozier. Give, give our viewing audience just a few clues about the offensive system we're looking at. They will send receivers deep uh, down the sideline, spread out that defensive secondary, but they will always have a tight end or a back that's crossing across the middle shallow, or a back as Rozier just did in the last play, standing there about three yards from the line of scrimmage. Try to draw it with Rozier this time, and he's down around the line of scrimmage. Luther, 15 out of 18, or 151 yards and a touchdown. Jacksonville leading Birmingham, 20 to 10. Bill Rowe made that last tackle for the Stallion. And there's the time remaining in the third quarter. Temperature up around 94 degrees now. A hotter number than that down on the playing surface, but thank goodness it's grass. There's a player down there, left guard, Gary Anderson, number 60. When I talked to him, he said he'd probably lose anywhere from 12 to 15 pounds today because of the heat. Third and two, Luther's pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Doug Smith was pounding through there. Mike Sameta, I think, number 90, was the man who came in, Keith, and got the major portion of that ball. I'm not sure. There were so many bodies flying through there. Hard to throw it over a guy like uh, Smith, who's 6'5", 300, or Sameda, 6'3", 285. There's See, everybody's slamming to the outside. The yep. Sameda was in the middle, but it was Doug Smith. Yep. The man who knocked it down. It's gone! Swider's best punt of the ball game by far. McFadden at the 10. Oh, look out! He's gone, Keith! Out of bounds, finally. At the Jacksonville 45, number 24, Marvin Lewis, a fullback out of Tulane, had the angle on him, but once he got out of that first tangle on that 47-yard front, he took off for 45 yards, so it's a net of two. Well, McFadden thought he was gone here. He's backed up, and he what he did, Keith, he outkicked his coverage, did a great job of making people miss and staying on his feet. No one actually hit him or grabbed him. Here it becomes a foot race, but he just didn't have the angle. Paid the price with a pretty good lick that time. But he'll so, take it every time. Keith. Birmingham is setting around the Jacksonville 45 now and trying to cash in Three, this field position. Pat. Joe Costello, number 99, the outside backer, got around the corner and got a hold of his shirt tail and jerked him down. He got around number 72, Frankie Smith, who's come in to replace number 64, Mike Turner Key. And I believe there was just a mystery. You see the ball being snapped, but everybody was just holding their ground. Costello got the jump on number 72, Frankie Smith, and was able to get the angle to throw a out down. So that was an error somewhere in uh, communication between Mark Battaglia and Cliff Stout on that snap. Because the offensive lineman just stayed there. They sure did. Loss is all the way back Lewis, to the Lewis. 47. Second down, 17. Out of the shotgun, the pass is low for Jones. Gant, number 23, bringing in a play now from Raleigh Dodge. Joe Cribbs will lead. Reggie. 
I'm wondering what did happen to Mike Turner, 64. I didn't see him in there earlier. He yeah. injured. On third and long, Stout wants to go deep. Goes down the middle with it to Smith. And Jim Smith is thrown down around the 43, 44-yard line. And they're short of a first down. Smithy's hurt. Turner, number 64, he's not in, Keith, because uh, it's been reported that he has a strained right knee. He's a young man from LSU that has been playing every position along the line. Smith's got to come out, and the crowd of better than 40,000 gives the Jacksonville defense a standing O. And Parsons is in the punt. 37-48-33. On three previous kicks today, Gary Clark is deep. Short, high, hanging kick. They may be able to kill it deep. And they do at the three. So once again, Bob Parsons gets the job done. A 40-yard kick that went almost to the rim of the Gator Bowl, which seats 80,000 capacity. And came down softly. They got a good bounce on it. And Earl Gant put it down on the three. Oh, look at this. Mike Rozier breaks it big. Goes left, veers right, straight up the field. And bingo, first down at the 16. Mike Rozier trying to increase his value to his ball club. And it's rumors well. that he may be headed for the Houston Oilers. Time will tick out now at the end of the third quarter. And we've got 15 minutes to play, and the Birmingham Stallions have a problem. They trail Jacksonville 20 to 10. And the Houston Gamblers have just blown their game open against San Antonio 38 to 12. Jim Kelly, four touchdown passes. The last one was a 69-yard bullet to Gerald McNeil. Jacksonville owns the football, first down at their own 16-yard line. Birmingham had two turnovers in that first half. They have not had a turnover in the second half. They came out and drove in for a touchdown. It looked like they might turn this thing around. But Jacksonville came right back with an answer in the third quarter. Ed Luther's pass thrown underneath, intended for Larry Mason, and it is incomplete with number 52, Bill Rowe, right there. And what I saw of the Memphis showboats against Denver the other night, they're beginning to get a little roundy. Yes. Tampa Bay leading Baltimore late in the third quarter by a touchdown. Riley Dodge, none too happy. He knows that 10 points is not an insurmountable lead here in the last period of play. But he's going to need his defense number one right now to stop this team from having a long drive to give his offense field position. <laughs> On third and ten, Luther is sacked. Brought down by Ken Kelly, blitzing from the outside. And now Larry Swider is going to need a big kick. Well, the defense did its share, stopping them inside their own five-yard line, or excuse me, at the uh, seven-yard line. Now it's going to be up to the offense. But with a ten-point lead, Keith, I don't believe the Jacksonville Bulls defense can afford to play loose, mm -hmm. to give them room underneath. They've got to play them tight because they can score very quickly and come back and win this ball. They go after Schweider. He gets it out of there and knocks it up to about the 45 where McFadden calls for a fair catch. So Swider didn't get all of it. He produces a 38-yard punt, but that's net because there was no return. Good field position on first down. Misses, and he literally missed Jim Smith because he had him over there. Smith had run Donald Dax deep. Dax scrambling to come back. Jimmy was wide open. Yep, the ball just thrown low, and Jimmy was not able to dig that one out of the dirt. You run those reverses when defenses are over-pursuing. When they're coming after you with a head of steam to nullify that uh, pursuit, you run a reverse, and you can break big for you on the other side. Watch the blitz. Watch the blitz. Three, four. Second and six. Option, Stout keeps it. And slides out of bounds at the 15. 
Good play by Cliff working the option. That's a first down. First down driven out by Beeson. Defense thinking that he would prefer the pitch, and I'm sure he would. Picked up the option man, Joe Cribbs. He cut it inside. Picked up the first down and saved himself some seconds on the clock. Well, I hope to see about 70,000 here, or more even, next week for the New Jersey game. They, the anticip face. they anticipate they could draw a full house with them coming down. Hurts Walker played a lot of college games here. Oh, he had great days. Oh, did he have great days here as a collegian. Stout has all day and the middle of oh. next week. And he had Joey Jones all by himself. Joey Jones was wide open. There was the soul around him. And Jim Smith cutting across in front of Jones tried to make the catch and couldn't do it. He didn't know Jones. But was it was there. right in Jimmy's hands, Keith. And all I know, Jimmy feels bad because he didn't catch it. Cliff feels bad. One of those things that you'll see it happen from time to time. Dan Ross, when we covered their game, the Breakers playing against New Jersey dropped one. Even the best of receivers drop it. Jimmy Smith would oh, never drop right this pass again. Right behind him, better. look at Jones. Jones oh. was all by himself. Oh, what a play. Hmm, me. Nobody feels worse about that than that guy. No. Jimmy is a Three. tough competitor. It was a five-yard penalty flagged against Jacksonville for a person, what was it? But uh, it gives uh, Birmingham a first down on the 10-yard line of Jacksonville. So while we were looking at the replay, there was a flag thrown and the penalty. And uh, Birmingham is setting now first and goal at the Jacksonville 10-yard line. Joe Cribbs is back in the lineup. Second down now after the pass was missed and uh, Stout continuing to throw. He hits Smith. Smith goes high in the air and is brought down by Donald Dykes just inside the five-yard line. So it is third and goal now for Birmingham. Donald Dykes making Jim Smith pay the price for Cliff Stout's high pass here. Jimmy would have rather driven him deeper in the end zone so that he would have more of a cushion and possibly catch it in the end zone. Dykes played him very well. Ball's thrown high, and you see him right there. He goes underneath Jimmy, hits him just above the knees with the shoulders. Smitty comes right back Jacksonville down. Jacksonville making defensive changes here now, and they're hurrying to get people in there. That's not a good thing on third down and goal from just inside the five. Seven man front up there as Scott drops back to throw, and again, he's got all day to throw the ball, and throws it in the corner, incomplete. And the crowd roars. It is now fourth and goal from just inside the five. Good pressure across the board from the Jacksonville Bulls defensive line, Keith. Making those changes very quickly. They made the changes because they came out a much more of a run offense on that particular play. Cliff was under great pressure, and instead of being sacked, Threw the ball away beyond the end zone. They'll go for three with 10.45 to play in the game. 22-yarder by Miller. Missed it! Oh, boy! That'll take a little steam out of your boiler. It took a little out of Robin Earls as a tight end threw his helmet in disgust. You make that kind of a field position and stick it down there that close and come away empty, it's gonna make your buttermilk taste bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Would you write that one down for me, Keith? <laughs> First down, Jacksonville at their own 20. They lead by 10 with 10-20 to play in the ball game. <laughs> One little draw inside and there is nothing there for Mike Rozier. Well, Danny Miller is disconsolate. There's no question about that. From our end zone camera, we see he gets it up. And all during practice, he had been playing the wind, Keith, because during practice, pregame warm-up, he was kicking this exact same kick, and the wind was blowing it back into the uprights. So I believe once again, he played the kick for the wind, and there was no wind that time. 
Yeah, but it's so close. 22 yards. I don't think the wind's going to affect it all that much. He hit six straight field goals before he missed that one. That's thrown away as Luther had to get rid of it in a hurry, and Kim Kelly was eating him up. Had I not exact stood behind him, Keith, during that pregame warm and watched it, I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. And then he came over and he was telling the punter, Parsons, gets his pass away just as he is belted. And I think he got a holding call. And again, it was Ken Kelly boring in and hitting Luther solid as he turned the ball loose. Yep, holding along the line of scrimmage by one of the linemen. I believe it might have been Simmons. I'm not sure. Roy Simmons looked like he was standing over somebody like he'd wrestled them down like one of those bulls in the rodeo. Birmingham well, wants the ball. Well, they've got another opportunity to quick, Keith. The defense is giving it to them. Second time in a row with an opportunity at good field position. The offense has to get more of that killer instinct and put the ball away. Jacksonville needs a big punt from Swider. Birmingham has Thad McFadden back. Ryder's best punt today with a 47-yarder. Taking his time, he's now inside 10 seconds. Gets it out, and that is not what they wanted. It's straight up and straight down and takes a Birmingham bounce, and the Stallions are going to have the football right around the 40-yard line. Oh, me, that was only a... They put it on the 39, so that is a 19-yard punt. The last time they had it at the 45 on the Jacksonville side of the field and came away empty on the missed field goal. This time they've got it on the Jacksonville 39 with 8 minutes and 50 seconds to play in the game and trailing by 10 points. Stout gives to Cribs and blowing in number 50 Terry Beeson, the inside linebacker. Takes his feet from under him and he lost a yard. Uh, here's Tim Brandt now with Brian Sipe. Brian, we just announced that we are going to be back here to watch the Jacksonville, New Jersey game next week. So the obvious question is, will you be ready? Yeah, I believe I'll be ready physically. Uh, Lindy's going to have to make a determination here uh, next week or in the next couple weeks uh, as to when I'll be ready to operate the offense. Of course, I haven't taken a snap since I was injured. and uh, uh, But physically, I'll be there. Mentally, I'll be there. Severe injury to that shoulder. Do you have full mobility now? Yeah, I feel real confident with it. I'm, uh, I've still got a little bit of soreness there after I throw, but, but really I don't think about it anymore. I've been throwing some defensive stress uh, uh, le during last week in practice, and I was doing everything with it that I've uh, always done. All right, let's talk very quickly here. You've got 7.50 left in this ball game. have not moved the ball the last two uh, offensive series. How critical is it now to melt some of that clock? Well, that's got to be in the back of our minds. I'll tell you, we, we kind of had them figured out for about three quarters, and they've thrown something different at us here in the fourth quarter. They brought a third linebacker back in the game, and they're putting more pressure on Ed. So we're working on the adjustments right now. I think if we come up with it, we'll solve that, and uh, we should be able to put them away. Okay, Brian, thank you. Keep. And it's first down, Birmingham, at the 21-yard line of Jacksonville. As Stout hooks up with Jim Smith. Yeah, we are. Crib down at the 20. Juan Johnson, I believe it was, firing in the inside backer to hit Crib. Keith, the defensive unit of the Bulls is doing a very excellent job where the offensive line comes out, makes initial contact, to open up a quick hole, but then they're very fast to shut it down, not to give them the secondary lanes to run through. Three, four. Second down, nine. remaining back <laughs> penalty flag short pass Jones knocked down around the 16 let's see what the call is Don Wilson the referee that flag came quick somebody might have lined up offside false start nope. the right tackle on the offense the play will go over it's still second down so once again the Stallions make a mistake at a most inopportune time. Pat Phoenix, number 71, moving. There he is. He's right there. That's a real tough call. He moved just a hair before Italia snapped the football. I tell you, though, the linesman didn't hesitate. That flag came flying. Sure did. 
Ball comes back to the 25, and so it is second down Reggie. and 14 now Reggie. from the 25. Slide right. And one. They go to the shotgun. Bounce pass into the end zone for Jones, and he's got it. Touchdown. Joey Jones outran Van Jakes, and Stout hit him on the numbers. Joey Jones did a great job, Keith, of running a pass pattern that should not have got him open against that particular defense. He came from the extreme right or the left as we look at it from our end zone camera, there are two safeties who are dropping back deep. Cliff looks at Joey, looks away, and the two safeties are up front. Joey goes all the way back to the end zone, just hugs that end zone line to stay inbounds and makes the catch. So it's a poor decision for the safeties at the position they took on in the uh, defensive alignment. They're always supposed to be as deep as the it's deepest gone, guy. It's easy, Danny easy. Miller makes the extra point. Miller hits it to make it now a 20 to 17 ball game with 7:01 to play in the game. We'll, we'll take another look. He's driving his man off. He's coming in. It looks like a post. Now there are safeties back here to his right. He just keeps going, going. He gets behind them. They're nowhere to be seen in this shot right here. He makes a catch, running along the end zone line. Great play. Great pattern adjustment. Defensive mistake by the Jacksonville Bulls. So the issue is still very much in doubt. 7-0-1 to play as Birmingham has come out here in the second half, made a defensive adjustment after that one touchdown, and they have shut him down. Back at the goal line, it's Reggie Butts. Whoa-ho! Pops out of there and comes to the 27. Reggie Butts from Tulane almost popped that thing. Now that was the best return of a kickoff all afternoon. We'll take another good look at it. Great close-up of him and his concentration. Fielding the ball, looking it all the way in. You see how he weaves. He's not making any real sharp moves. Picking up his blocks. And people coming in from the periphery, making the stop. Ball is right between the hash marks of 27 and 28-yard line. And now the Bulls will come up. See what they can do about possessing the ball. Going to throw it on first down. They've got a man. That's Alexis. And Alton Alexis is thrown out of bounds up at the 44-yard line. First down for the Bulls. Very quick release. Quick release on that particular pass play. He gets down. Look, only about 10 yards. Very quick. In between the seams of the zone coverage, the linebackers. You see the stiff arm right there. <laughs> Picks up another few yards there. Number 26 was David Evans, the man he tried to stiff on. Clock is rolling. Alton played with uh, the that's Bengals, it. and that's where Lindy saw him, Tukey. Clock will go rolling at 624 after he stepped out of bounds. Rozier. Nothing there for Mike. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Malcolm Taylor brought him down. Taylor was with the Gamblers last year. But at least Jacksonville, with that play, is able to get the clock running. Yes, you see Raleigh Dodge. You know, it's tough for Raleigh. Well, in this situation, with so many of the problems that Birmingham is having recently. But the players have a great deal of respect for him. He motivates them. They want to play for him. He's in a tough situation now. His defense has to respond. Possibly come up with a turnover to give his offense another shot. It's gone, it's It'll gone. jump out to Larry Mason to get him one-on-one. -on -one. He jukes one man. But he only gets it out to about the 47 before he's brought down by Herb Spencer. There's a little time. What a great catch for a first down at the 41-yard line. And Luther, as he released the ball, took a lick. The pass caught by Gary Clark. Dumars got him. And I'm not sure who it was that uh, got Luther, but somebody really decked him. We'll take a look. You see the entire secondary. They're coming up, playing a combination man zone. Gary Clark just goes up, makes a real super catch right there in front of Dumars. 
Goes up high, makes the defensive back make, and then is possessing the football yep. and moving it down the field so that even if they don't score, the Birmingham Stallions have to march the length of the field to go the long way to get a touchdown or to go ahead or a field goal to tie. Well, they'd like to come out of this possession with a field goal. That would force Birmingham to go for the touchdown. From the 38, it is second down and seven to the Bulls. Birmingham storming. The ball goes out to Mason, and Mason is belted by Dumars and knocked down back at the 44. And number 70, Malcolm Taylor came in to give him a lick because when Dumars hit Mason, he didn't really knock him down or stop him cold, Keith. He was spinning, and then Malcolm came in and said, well, if there's ever a chance for me to knock one loose, this might be it. You'll see it on the replay. He has his back turned. There's the first hit. He turns inside, and right there, Malcolm just wants to dislodge the ball from him. That was a big defensive play for the Stallions because instead of third and short, they're now looking at third down and 13. Out the field goal range. Luther's pass. Harry Kemp can't quite pull it down in front of Dennis Woodbury. Dennis Woodbury, we haven't called his name all afternoon, Keith. He's been doing a good job on coverage. They've gone away from him right on that play when you need him the most, stride for stride. Well, uh, Jacksonville got the ball at 7.01. You've now got 2.38 to play in the game, so they've killed a chunk of time, the longest possession since, the, I guess, the first quarter. Now Swider is in, standing at his 40. He'll hit it about the 45, and Thad McFadden is deep for the Stallion. Again, they need a big punt, Jacksonville does, from Swider. Got it. That's a good one. What are they going to do with it? Call it back to the 20. He hit it and knocked oh. it out of bounds. They put it out on the one. Marvin Lewis hit it before he crossed the goal line and knocked it out of bounds at the one. I think he hit it before he crossed the goal line. But oh. Joe Richwine was standing right there, and he marked it. It's even inside the one. It was batted and looked like he batted it beyond it, Keith. If I were Raleigh Dodge, I'd signal that head coach right now and have him throw that red flag. He's got nothing to lose. No, he doesn't. He's got absolutely nothing well, to lose. it'll cost him a timeout. It'll cost wrong. him a timeout. But if he challenges it and he's correct, it won't cost him a timeout to have the ball at the 20-yard line. You can't depend, Keith, at this juncture in the ball game that another situation will arise for him to challenge that would be important. We'll take another look even without a challenge. You see the ball bouncing? You see it being batted right there? It looks like it goes into the end zone. Keith. No, I don't. It came over. It went over Rich Wine's uh, right shoulder. Now, uh, that's the key. That's the only measurement you can have here. It goes yeah, but look where he's at. Well, that's true. I might have challenged. Big mistake. And look where the ball's at. They could get a safety here. Yes, they could. Out out of the end zone. Pressure! He gets it away just before he takes the lick. Oh, my. He almost got sacked in that end zone. Yes, he did. 2.06 to play in the game. Both teams are three timeouts. Birmingham coming in, 7-2. and two. Best record in the USFL. Jacksonville having won two in a row, 4-5. And here is a play they'll talk about. Uh, his last contact with the ground, his foot was this side of the goal line. He hit the ball. His next step was beyond. And you saw where the official dropped his initial marker, Keith. Then he started backing up. Second and ten, about a foot away from the goal line. Stout keeps it and comes out to the five. Bob Nelson brought him down. And we are at two minutes to play. Two minutes to go in the football game. Two minutes to play. Third down and six for the Birmingham Stallions. They're on their own five-yard line. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Tampa Bay beating Baltimore badly, 28 to 7. Tampa Bay took a licking at Birmingham last week, and they have bounced right back.
out. A lot of time. Intercepted. Touchdown for Derek Matisse. take a miracle for Birmingham as Batiste steps in front of Stout's pass out of the end zone took it into the end zone for a Jacksonville touchdown and now they'll try to make it a 10 point lead Franco is out wider to hold and it's good Twenty-seven, seventeen. now Greg Batiste out of McGee State, 5'9", 180 pounds. Obvious passing situation. Cliff Stout will try and muscle it in between the secondary for completion. Batiste times it, steps in front of Joe Krebs. It's an easy jaunt into the end zone. We'll take another look. The secondary back in the deep zone coverage, waiting. Linebackers and Derek up tight. Very classic interception in the sense that it was readable, it was predictable, and he played the tendency, he made the smart play, the results, a touchdown. And will go down as the big play and probably the clinching play for the Jacksonville Bulls. Very, very easily the clinching play of this ball game. This it, will certainly get the attention of Walt Michaels and company. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they got to play Orlando Monday night at home, but... Now this trip to Jacksonville begins to look tougher and tougher, I think, for them. A short kick. Robin Earl fields it up on the 26-yard line, and the big tight end rumbles all the way back to the 48 for Birmingham. Keith, I think when we look back at this ball game, the keys to this ball game in terms of the score, and I'm just talking about the score and that execution, is the fact that on three turnovers by the Birmingham Stallions, the first interception tipped off Jim Smith's hands, the fumble by Leon Perry, and this one here translated into 17 points for the Jacksonville Bulls. Well, as we told you, the New Jersey Generals are gonna be here, and the Bulls will be snorting. And I hope the home folks will come by the thousands to see it. It'll be fun to see this big old stadium mostly filled with partisan fans. Cliff Stout, looking deep. Now takes off. And Batiste runs him down, but Cliff's going to have uh, not, not quite, just short, just a half a step short of the first down. Well, he saw the marker. He tried to make it over there in time. But Batiste... Derek, the hero of the last minute. Yeah, he's become quite a star here, hasn't he? <laughs> Instant fame in the last two minutes of the ball game. They give him the first down. They mark him past the marker. They've given him the first down at the Jacksonville 41. And Cliff back throwing, gets it off just before Millard hits him. Oh, my... Now that, folks, is a collision. Dan Jakes and Robin Earl. Robin Earl, number 89, the tight end. Jakes, number 22, the corner. Earl is 240. He took that one right in the face. Jakes, with a shiver, looked like 195 pounds. And I'll tell you one thing, Keith. If I were Robin Earl and I had another chance to play these guys, I'd come loaded for bear if you no, see him. shoulder. You see him, he cocks that shoulder up and just waited for him to come over and unload it just under his chin strap. Robin Earl, to his credit, was able to get up and go off the field under his own power. <laughs> Somewhat drained, however. That, that was a lick. Ball is at the 33. We're at second down and two. 
Well, I guess you could say Bob Monroe's a bit like a Timex. Took a lick and he's still ticking. So Jones is intercepted again by Batiste. Derek Batiste makes his third big play inside of two minutes to go in the ball game. And Jacksonville's got the ball back with 108 and they should be able to run it out. <laughs> And that one was a great diving interception on the Cliff Scout pass. He's intending it for Joey Jones, but Derek has an angle. Right there he goes in front. Joey Jones was not moving back to the football. Had he been moving back to the football, there would have been a collision. Possibly he could have caught it, but at least Derek would not have intercepted that pass. Joey Jones has to consistently come back for the ball to prevent that from happening. Yep, he's just standing there. Jacksonville starts the clock rolling and Birmingham immediately calls timeout and we get a fist fight along the line of scrimmage. They use three seconds. Now Birmingham, and if, if in fact they are charged with a timeout here, we'll have two remaining. So the John Wilson just said that's their second time out. We'll check it. Baltimore at Tampa this afternoon, 28 to 14, with 41,000 plus over there. So a lot of folks in Florida today watching the USFL, and that will move Tampa Bay back into a tie with Birmingham. With Birmingham losing here today, 105 to go. They trail by 10, 27-17. And if New Jersey beats Orlando Monday night, then the Generals are going to be in a tie. You'll have a three-way tie for first place in the Eastern Conference. And New Jersey coming in to play Jacksonville next Sunday, which we will cover for you at 2.30 Eastern time. This is Ed Luther running around. Now he slides down at the 29, and all he wanted to do was get the clock rolling. And Birmingham, uh, with two timeouts remaining, will surely spend another one. Now they do. Well, there's so much time on the clock. I, I don't see why Lindy just didn't run a few plays, Keith. I mean, run a couple of plays and really move the ball down the field. I think Raleigh probably would not have wasted those timeouts, figuring that he couldn't come back the length of the field and score a touchdown, get an onside kick, and score again. Let the clock run down to 20 seconds. I agree. Now. They're talking about letting the clock run down a little more, but uh, Birmingham now with one timeout remaining. And there's some difference of opinion between the referee and the official stats here. The ref says no timeouts left for Birmingham. And uh, Dave Burnson, our statistician, says they have one left. And the official statistician says one left. And the scoreboard says they have and two left. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get it together. Ball is on the 34, where it's third down and about uh, 16. 15 yards to go. You know, Keith, for as tough as it is for Riley Dodge, it's got to be equally as tough for someone like his wife who happens to be here sitting just on the other side of this glass partition watching this game as a wife in this usually the chief support system. The times are pretty tough and tough times right now for Birmingham. Well, they go home. Let's hope uh, after their Memphis game, it says uh, Luther takes it slides down and again we get a fight breaking out on the field as they're scuffling around trying to get the ball Herb Spencer coming in laid a lick on Ed Luther and one of the Jacksonville linemen took umbrage to that and that's what precipitated it and drew a penalty flag personal foul unnecessary roughness number 55 on the defense that's an automatic first down that's an automatic first down and that's a see you later the Jacksonville Bulls have defeated the Birmingham Stallions in this ball game. No matter if there should be a sudden bolt of lightning for a score for Birmingham, uh, they simply have run out of time. Only 44 seconds to play in the ball game. And Jacksonville now will have four more snaps. And Birmingham with only one timeout remaining. Or whatever remaining <laughs> as far as timeouts are concerned. I hope the next time the stadiums go home to Birmingham that they fill hey, Legion Field. I mean, let's prove it. Man. If they say they want it, let's prove it. Huh? And 
I know that is a great football city. I've been going there for almost 30 years watching football games. And Luther now takes the snap. And I don't think Birmingham is going to go through the exercise of another timeout to kill the clock. So that will do it. The final score. The Jacksonville Bulls, 27. The Birmingham Stallions, 17. And a considerable upset here at the Gator Bowl. And we'll be back next Sunday when the New Jersey Generals come to town.